If um, I have everyone muted, so if you'd like to speak this evening, bottom right corner of your, sorry, bottom left corner of your screen, you should see a microphone icon. There should be a slash on it at the moment. Just click that and have, um, it'll unmute yourself and then you'll be able to speak. Otherwise, you can also use the chat feature, which is located dead center of the bottom of the screen on your Zoom toolbar. Um, I do wanna say thank you uh, for coming this evening, but also on behalf of the faculty and staff at Beckman Catholic, just thank you as parents for all that you have done um, over the last uh, course of six to nine weeks, depending on how you wanna look at this, through our C-term classes and then through our required classes as well. We know that this has been a challenge for everyone and a learning opportunity and a learning curve for all of us to work on. And we know that uh, parents had an extra burden put on them with this because a lot of that, those things that we do in the classroom or do in the school hallways, we didn't have the capability to do those things and have those face-to-face -face daily conversations with your, your sons or daughters. And so a lot of that, those conversations about, did you get your work in? Did you do this? Did you have this to do? A lot of those things that we sometimes can do at school, um, we had to help put that on you. And a lot of you did do that very well and effectively, even though at times it probably was a source of frustration um, and some added stress at home with lots of other things going on. So please know that we do appreciate all that you've done uh, to make this possible over the last few months. So this evening, we're gonna just briefly go over um, those grading options again. We're gonna show you the survey that'll be released tomorrow with the recording of tonight's session. And um, so you know what that looks like and then open it up for questions that you have on this or any other topics as well. So we'll start with a prayer. So I just ask you to join me uh, in that and I'll pray and just uh, follow along please. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. O clement, O loving, O sweet Mother Mary, we, your children of every nation, turn to you in this pandemic. Our troubles are numerous, our fears are great. Grant that we may deposit them at your feet, take refuge in your immaculate heart, and obtain peace, healing, rescue, and timely help in all our needs. You are our mother. Pray for us to your son. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So as we mentioned a couple weeks ago, or went on Monday the 22nd, and then um, refresh that information a little bit later in the week, um, this Board of Education uh, approved three options for semester two grades based on the situation that we're in. So tonight we're gonna go over those with you, um, give you some tips and hints as you look at your own son or daughter's information, um, and then we'll go over some examples as well with that. So there are three potential opportunities or options for grades that students can take, and these can be exercised by individual class. So you can look at each course and decide which of these three options you would like. The first option is that students can take the grade as listed in PowerSchool for the second semester. Um, when you look at PowerSchool, um, and we would post one of these, but with student privacy guidelines and regulations, we don't have a, a fake student account with grades in it that we could show you. Um, so please, when you, when you take a look at your PowerSchool screen, you're gonna wanna look at three different columns as we go through this. The first one is that S2 or second semester grade. So that's a combination of both third and fourth quarters. And that would be what the student earned with all the work that they've completed for the course. So that would be what we typically would use for a grade um, in a regular situation in a typical year. So they can take that grade as earned if that's the grade that looks to be um, most accurate or, or the best essentially for them. So that's the first option to look at. Um, let's say that a student maybe didn't do as well as they would have, would have liked during the fourth quarter when we did required learning from home uh, and they actually did really well in the third quarter. And so their third quarter grade is higher than their fourth quarter grade or their second semester grade. In that instance, the board approved that as long as that fourth quarter grade is at a passing level, that the student can take the quarter three letter grade as their second semester grade. The third option would be, let's say that things didn't go very well, um, weren't going well third quarter. The hope was that fourth quarter things could get picked back up with the situation we had it didn't and maybe that grade overall for the second semester isn't where, where you want it to be. In that instance, you can also choose to take a pass grade. A pass grade is listed as a P. It gives full credit for the course, um, but it does not get calculated into a student's overall cumulative grade, cumulative grade point average. And for ninth through 12th graders, that is something that they wanna keep an eye on 
because your GPA is often used um, for college admissions. It's also something that insurance companies utilize when they look at good student discounts. Um, and I just went through that because we added a 16 year old onto the car insurance in the last week. Um, so I, you know, our insurance company that we work from is a 3.0 3 GPA or better. Um, and that triggers the student discount. You would have to check with your individual companies for what that is. Um, but if a 3.0 is a B average overall. So if you're looking at your, your son or daughter's um, overall cumulative GPA and looking at those grades, if those grades typically are in the B, C range, you might want to take a look at that. If they earned a D overall for that second semester grade with this situation, um, it might be better to take the pass and not have that hit on the GPA. So those are the three options that we have. I'm going to go through four different scenarios kind of to lay out how these would operate and maybe how to take a look at those. And then we'll stop and pause for questions. You can also interrupt anytime you'd like to ask a question. We've also got the chat window open. So we'll take a look at those if you post a question in there as well. So example number one that's up on your screen would be, let's say a student had a B before we went into the closure, over the fourth quarter had an A for the work and overall because of those things combined, they had a second semester grade of an A. The best advice that we would give in this situation is they should take option number one because the A would be the best grade that they've earned, the highest grade that they can. And so they should take the semester two grade as listed in power school. They could take the B for semester two because that quarter four grade is passing, but in that case, it's a lower grade than what it was before, so that wouldn't be advisable. Um, they could take a pass overall if they wanted to. However, in this case, the A would most likely be the best grade to take because it's still not gonna negatively impact the student's grade point average. Let's take a look at a second scenario, which might maybe would be something that could have happened during the, the closure. Student had to be in quarter three, again, was hoping to boost that grade up during the fourth quarter, but struggled a little bit with the, the learning environment from home. So they received a D for the fourth quarter, and overall those two averaged out to a C. So best option here would be option number two, in that case, because they had a passing grade for the fourth quarter, the overall grade was a C, but they could take, they could take a B in this instance that the board approved because of the, of, of the situation. And so the B would be better than the, the C. So they could take a C. The advice would be to take a B. However, if you wanted, the other option would be to take a pass if that's something that was of interest too. But in this case, you'd have to look at that situation the students typically earning all A's and that overall B, B would be a little bit lower than what they typically earn, then maybe that pass grade overall might be something to consider in that situation. The students typically getting a C and they had that B, the B probably would be better and would boost their grade point average a little bit as well. So a third example would be, student was doing well in the third quarter really struggled with the at-home learning and failed the fourth quarter. And so those two averaged out overall to a B. In this case, the second option for that third quarter grade is not a possibility because of the failing grade for the fourth quarter. So that's something just to keep in mind. To be able to take that third quarter grade, you have to look at that quarter four grade and make sure that it was passing. Um, and that's been done to make sure that students attempted those items during that semester, during that quarter while we were home. So in this case, the two options that a student could take would be the B for the semester, which is option one, the semester two grade, or they could take the third option, which would be that pass grade overall. Again, that pass grade would not impact the GPA. So if a student typically would have gotten an A in this course or expected to get an A and now has that B for the semester, taking the pass grade would not impact the GPA in a negative way. Last example, Student had a, a very similar to the one prior to that. Student had a C for quarter three, failing grade in quarter four, overall grade of a D. Um, again, what would you do here? You could take the D overall. Um, option two for that C grade is not possible because of the, in this situation, the student failed the fourth quarter, or they could take that passing grade overall. 
Um, if the D would be a little bit lower in that case, again, wouldn't impact the GPA component of it. So a question's been asked in the chat, can you take different options for each course? Yes. Um, each option, you can look at each course individually, one by one, and look at these three scenarios and then choose which of the three would be the, the preferred option by class. So in some instances, you may take the semester two grade because that's the best option available. Some instances, it might be the quarter three grade, or it could be that the pass option overall is good. Um, something to keep in mind if you look at that pass option, again, one, it doesn't get calculated into the GPA. Two, on the transcript, it still does show that the student passed the course and earned the credit for it. Um, but if it's an honors course, something to keep in mind um, for students that are in those honors courses that have a, with the weighted GPA, if the pass option is taken, the weighting, that extra weighting that those honors courses get does not get included in. Um, we tried to work on that to see if that was a possibility, but there's not a way to calculate those within our grading system. So that would be the only drawback to taking a pass is if that was a weighted GPA class, you don't get those extra, those extra GPA points that those other ones do. However, if you're in an honors course and your grade was lower than you anticipated, it would be better to take the pass than to take that lower GPA piece overall in most instances. So those are the four options. I'm gonna stop for just a second and see if there are any questions. Okay, there was a question about impact on AP. AP courses, I do believe have a weight to them. So that would be one to take a look at potentially. Um, where those are in terms of taking that pass and not getting those extra points. All right. If you have other questions, continue, you can continue to add them in the chat or feel free to unmute in that bottom left corner. Um, we'll move on to the next piece, just kind of to go over how this is gonna work a little bit too. So after tonight's session, we'll record this and tomorrow morning, we'll post it onto YouTube, include the link and also send out um, a short email that will have information in, in that of, with a Google form that I'm going to show you um, right now after we go through this slide. Um, so families will be able to fill out the form. You, if you have multiple family members or multiple students, you'll need to fill it out each time for each individual student. And we'll walk through, and you're going to be able to do that for each class on the form. So for first period class, you list it, second period, and so on. Finalized grades are due back from faculty on June 5th. Um, so you can, if you know that your son or daughter has everything in and there's a score and everything is graded, you can start working on this tomorrow. Um, but if they're not in, just know that, fact, that staff have until June 5th to submit final grades for the semester. Uh, the form will need to be back to us by Friday, June 12th, and we will have a, some sort of verification process either by confirming via email or phone that the options that were listed on the form are those that the student wants to, to take. Um, we did that with the seniors when we did this option as well, just to make sure that the student wasn't saying one thing and parents wanted another. And so we just wanna make sure that, that communication is happening. So we'll verify it with the parent just to make sure that the, what we're seeing on our end is if, what the student wants to do. This will require us to do manual adjustments of grades. So you're not going to see the change in that grade overall um, until we are able to lock grades and then we have to go in um, to do this manually. And so it's gonna take us some time to do that. So it could be the middle of June before the grades are truly finalized at this point because it'll take us time to get through all these pieces. So we just ask you for patience and to know that once you've submitted the form and it's verified, it could be another one to two weeks before we get everything entered in with the other things that are going on too. But they will be entered in so that a transcript can be issued and those other things happen. So let's take a look at that form so you can see what, we'll, what you'll be asked to fill out as part of this. 
So on the Google form, the three options are again listed with some instructions and directions. Um, for the students that have, junior high students in particular that have exploratory courses, or if there are students that are in uh, choir that also have PE opposite those or are taking an independent study course, uh, you'll have to put those additional courses down at the bottom after you go through periods one through eight. There are spots down there for additional courses. So the best thing to do when you fill out this form is have this open and most likely in one window and have PowerSchool with the, the grades and the courses open in another. So we'll ask you to put your email address in at the top, your student's last name and first name and grade. And then for each course, as you can see on your screen, you'll list the class. So let's say it's theology, theology 10. And then right underneath that, you can choose which of the options you want. The semester two grade is listed, the quarter three grade for semester two, again, that's available if the student passed the fourth quarter, or you can take the pass, the pass grade instead of the letter grade. So you would just click which option you want. Let's say in this case, it's that uh, semester two grade. Then move on to second period and repeat that process for every course that the student has. So third period, fourth period, and so on. If they have a study hall, you can leave that period blank because there's no grade there we'll be able to go back and look at the form and be able to, to uh, verify that piece of it as well. Again, sixth period only has a spot for one class along with third and seventh. So those students that have multiple courses in those hours, when you get past eighth period, there's a, and there's a spot after the zero hour for two additional courses to be listed there as well. Um, if a student needs more than those, um, email us with that information, fill out the form with what's there, but then send an email to me or Mr. Deverex, or we'll be taking a look at these if we need to contact you to get those other ones. But we're pretty sure that should give us enough spots for the majority of students. There might be one or two students out there that we would maybe need a few more spots for, and we'll deal with those individually. Um, then at the bottom of the form, we just ask you to provide uh, parent name and contact information, either phone or email or you can be reached during business hours so we can do the verification process just to make sure this all is right before we officially enter. Just click and then you just need to click submit and we'll have that information. Any questions about the form we're asking you to complete? Or any questions about this process? So just as a review, what, what are items that families need to complete here by June 12th? First off, review your, your students' grades on PowerSchool. Again, the columns to look at are the Q3 column, the Q4 column, and the S2 column. Determine based on looking at each course, which of the three grading options you wanna exercise, that semester two grade, or the quarter three grade, or the past overall. Then you wanna look each individual class up on the form, complete it by course, choose which of the three options you want to have, and then submit that by June 12th. Question in the chat was, can a student do pass-fail for just one? Yes. You can do pass-fail for one class, two classes, all of them, none of them. Um, each option, you can look at each option and pick which one is the best option based on each course. As long as you're here, just some updates on summer activities. Um, the baseball and softball coaches have just asked me to remind folks that practices will start on Monday next week. And if students are interested in participating but didn't um, state that they were interested earlier in the year, that they can contact either, either the coaching staffs to let them know. Uh, I know for sure Mr. Miser has said if there's some girls that are interested in playing softball, and they're scheduled with the current situation now allow for that and they weren't thinking about it, they are welcome to come in and uh, join the team. Just let them know that they intend to come. 
The other piece that uh, people have asked questions about are schedules of when games will happen. There's still a lot of fluidity. I don't know if that's for sure a word, but there's, it's a very fluid situation right now. Some schools are still determining what levels are going to play at their schools, how they're going to do this. Um, some places are postponing tournaments or canceling tournaments that were originally scheduled based on being able to have enough people in place in those parts. Um, so that's causing some holes in the scheduling that I know coaches and, and Mr. Troutman are working to address. Once we've got some of those pieces firmed up and we know what the schedule is going to look like, we'll be sure to get that information out to folks so they know when games will be. Um, more information was released yesterday with a bunch of Q&As. Those are public documents. If you want to go to either the Girls Union or the Boys Athletic Association, you can read through those in terms of some of the Q&A information that they've received. We're still waiting on some more information about transportation and how that's going to work for that guidance from the Department of Ed. So as we get that info, we'll pass it along, um, but know that some of these things are still, like I said, it's a fluid changing situation at the moment. So one other question that came up in the chat box, if you wanted to accept grades as shown in power school and you wanna just be able to say, we're gonna take all semester two grades, I would be fine with you. Um, we could, you know what, I think what we can do, I think the best way to do that would be, we'll add a spot on the top, I don't know. Let me ask, let me ask folks here, I'm thinking out loud as we do this. We could just say that you could send that by email or we could add a spot at the top of the form that just says we will take semester two grades for all classes. I don't know if that would be confusing for folks or not. So if anybody has some thoughts on that, Throw them in the chat box. Okay. Other question, what grade's a passing grade? D, D or higher is a passing grade. So as long as the student's not failing, um, they're fine. And I will tell you that uh, Mr. Deverex and I have been watching those grade reports on a weekly basis. If we, you haven't had a phone call from us in the last two or three weeks, your son or daughter is doing fine. In terms, of, in terms of overall passing. And as Mr. Derek's put in, in the chat box, 70% is an overall, the percentage is overall for passing. So we'll, Mr. Derek's and I will chat in the morning when we're at school and we'll talk a little bit about that if you just wanna accept all grades as shown, if there's a, a faster way we can do that because that would help us out as well. Um, so we'll talk about that before we sub send out form and some of this information tomorrow. Um, I will hang out, we'll hang out for just a couple more minutes if somebody has a question they'd like to ask. Otherwise, that's the information that we have for you this evening. Again, thanks for taking time out of your schedule to come tonight. If you have questions too, as you fill out this information, please do not be afraid to contact us in the office. We'll be happy to walk you through information as well. Otherwise, thanks for coming this evening. And again, if you have any specific question, we'll hang up for just a couple minutes um, to answer any of those if someone wants to stay. Marcel, I just thanks for going online with us tonight uh, and Ryan as well. We appreciate it. And I think your idea of about a quick button for, you know, taking the semester grades is a good idea. Okay. Some way to do that.